Good morning and welcome to worship and celebration. We are so excited for what God is doing through us, in us, and with us. One of the joys of being a parent again as a middle-aged man is going to all the birthday parties, he says with a degree of sarcasm. But do you know when you go to a birthday party, there's a guest of honor, and everyone's so excited to honor that one special person. But those that go to the party enjoy it. They're enriched, and they leave with a goodie bag. That's our worship. This is a party to celebrate the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is His day. We call it the Lord's day. We don't call it our day. But we get to enjoy. We get to participate. And we may leave with a metaphorical goodie bag. Our hearts are filled with the knowledge of a saving Savior. One of my favorite scriptures Psalm 19, and that opening verse is on the screen. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims the work of his hands. And even the rocks will cry out. Our God is so big, and he is so great, and he is the famous one whom we celebrate. Let's stand and begin our worship singing two and four, the famous one. And he is 
about to declare his fame in what you are about to see. Let's be seated. Morning. Kính chào mục sư Linh cùng toàn thể hội thánh. Good morning, Pastor Chris and the entire congregation. Tôi tạ ơn Chúa. Sáng hôm nay hội thánh đang chứng kiến sáu anh chị em sẽ nhận thánh lễ bắp thêm. I thank God that we will be witnessing the baptism of our new brother and sister in Christ. Sơn Hải Nguyễn. Văn Hiệp Nguyễn, Stephanie Lee, Anna Nguyễn, Ánh uh, Nguyệt Bùi, Thì Mai Lê. Um, six of our brother and sister, uh, Mr. Hai Nguyen, Mr. Hiệp Nguyen, uh, Miss Stephanie Lee, Miss Anna Nguyen, Miss An Bùi, and Miss Mai Lê. Đây là hành động đánh dấu bước tiến căn bản quan trọng cho đời thuộc linh của người theo Chúa. Hành động này chứng tỏ anh chị em chúng ta quyết tâm và bày tỏ thái độ dứt khoát từ bỏ đời sống cũ của quá khứ để bước vào cuộc sống mới có Chúa Giêsu làm chủ. This is an important fundamental step for the spiritual life of every Christ followers. This actions prove that our brother and sister are determined to give up their old life of the past and to enter the new life with Jesus Christ. Chúng ta cầu xin Chúa đối thương ban cho các anh chị em này sau khi nhận thánh lễ bắp tem bằng nước cũng kinh nghiệm sự dẫn dắt của Đức Thánh Linh để trở nên môn đồ trung kiên của Đấng Christ hết lòng theo Chúa và làm gương sáng cho mọi người. We pray for God's mercy and grace on our brother and sister that after receiving the water baptism they will also experience the guidance of the Holy Spirit and to become faithful disciplined disciple of Christ follow God wholeheartedly and set an example for everybody. Thưa anh chị em, bắp tem là thánh lễ do chính Chúa Giêsu truyền dạy hội thánh phải tuân giữ. Vậy anh chị em phải lấy đức tin tiếp nhận thánh lễ này với lòng ăn năn mọi tội lỗi, quyết tâm chôn vùi đời sống cũ và sống đời sống mới với Chúa Giêsu, hầu được nhận lãnh và đầy dẫy Đức Thánh Linh. Đây là bắp tem duy nhất trong cuộc đời tin kính của anh chị em. Jesus himself commands us to observe and perform baptism. As we are followers of Christ's teaching, this ceremony indicates the repentance of our old sins and to bury our old life and starting a new life with Jesus Christ, our God, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Vậy, trước khi nhận thánh lễ bắp tem, xin hãy cùng xác quyết niềm tin trước sự hiện diện của Đức Chúa Trời Ba Ngôi và hội thánh bằng cách trả lời vắn tắt câu hỏi sau. So before each of our brother and sister receive the baptism, let's confirm their faith in the presence of our Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and the church by briefly answering the following questions. Có phải anh chị em đã thật lòng ăn năn mọi tội lỗi bằng lòng kể mình đã đồng chết, đồng chôn và đồng sống lại với Chúa Giêsu Christ? để sống cuộc đời đắc thắng cho Đức Chúa Trời không? The question is, have you sincerely repent all of your sins, willing to count yourself as dead, buried, and resurrected with Jesus, to live with the victorious life in Jesus? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yep. Nguyện Đức Chúa Trời Ba Ngôi nhận lấy lời hứa của anh chị em trước mặt Chúa và Hội Thánh. So our brother and sister have answered yes for the questions. May God, the sons and the Holy Spirit accept your promise before God and the church. Xin mời Hội Thánh đồng đứng lên tỏ lòng quan nghinh và cầu nguyện cho các anh chị em nhận lãnh thánh lễ bắp tem sáng nay. Please joining us by standing up and to prepare for the uh, baptism. Uh, 
Xin kính mời Hội Thánh đồng an tọa. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, you may be seated. Xin kính mời anh Hải Nguyễn. Uh, Mr. Hải Nguyễn. Vâng theo mạng lệnh của Chúa Giêsu Christ, nhân vì anh Hải Nguyễn đã công khai bày tỏ đức tin nơi Đức Chúa Giêsu Christ, nên tôi nhân danh Đức Chúa Cha, Đức Chúa Con và Đức Thánh Linh làm các phép báp tem cho anh. Following the command of Jesus Christ, Mr. Hải Nguyễn has publicly expressed his faith in Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Mr. Hip Nguyen. Vâng theo mạng lệnh của Chúa Giêsu Christ, nhân vì anh Hiệp Nguyễn đã công khai bày tỏ đức tin nơi Đức Chúa Giêsu Christ, nên tôi nhân danh Đức Chúa Cha, Đức Chúa Con và Đức Thánh Linh làm báp tem cho anh. Following the command of Jesus Christ, Mr. Hiệp Nguyễn has publicly expressed his faith in Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Miss Stephanie Lee. Vâng theo mạng lệnh của Chúa Giêsu Christ, nhân vì em Tiffany Lee đã công khai bày tỏ đức tin nơi Đức Chúa Giêsu Christ, nên tôi nhân danh Đức Chúa Cha, Đức Chúa Con và Đức Thánh Linh làm báp tem cho em. Following the command of Jesus Christ, Stephanie Lee has publicly expressed her faith in Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Miss <laughs> Anna Nguyen. Vâng theo mạng lệnh của Chúa Giêsu Christ, nhân vì em Anna Nguyễn đã công khai bày tỏ đức tin nơi Chúa Giêsu Christ, nên tôi nhân danh Đức Chúa Cha, Đức Chúa Con, Đức Thánh Linh mà làm phép báp tem cho em. Following the command of Jesus Christ, Miss Anna Nguyễn has publicly expressed her faith in Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Miss An Boy. Vâng theo mạng lệnh của Chúa Giêsu Christ, nhân vì em Ánh Nguyệt đã công khai bày tỏ đức tin nơi Đức Chúa Giêsu Christ, tôi nhân danh Đức Chúa Cha, Đức Chúa Con, Đức Thánh Linh mà làm báp tem cho em. Following the command of Jesus Christ, Miss An Boy has publicly expressed her faith in Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Miss Mai Le. Vâng theo mạng lệnh của Chúa Giêsu Christ, nhân vì chị Thùy Mai Ly đã công khai bày tỏ đức tin nơi Đức Chúa Giêsu Christ, nên tôi nhân danh Đức Chúa Cha, Đức Chúa Con và Đức Thánh Linh làm báp tem cho chị. Following the command of Jesus Christ, 
Ms. Myla has publicly expressed her faith in Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Kính mời toàn thể hội thánh đồng đứng. Um, please joining us uh, by standing up. Cầu xin Đức Chúa Trời ban ngôi, ban tình yêu đời đời của Đức Chúa Cha, ân điển cứu chuộc diệu kỳ của cứu Chúa Giêsu Christ và sự thông công năng quyền của Đức Thánh Linh ở cùng hội thánh Chúa từ nay cho đến ngày Chúa Giêsu Christ tái lâm. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you continue to give us your eternal love, your wondrous grace through Jesus Christ, and the present and the communicative power of the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us from now until the end of the day. Amen. Amen. Kính mời hội thánh Chúa đồng an tòa. Uh, you may be seated. Thank you. Back up. Oh man, that is so great. We just sang the words, desire of nations. Mm -hmm. There are six new names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I may not be able to pronounce those names, but one day in heaven, faith will be our sight. Does that just not make your heart want to explode to see that? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Uh-uh. Amen. Amen. Our God is awesome when we bring this together through obedience. And I had such a great view of seeing them walk down the steps with the biggest smiles because their lives have been changed. Our God is so great. Let's sing about his greatness. Great is the Lord, he's holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice, now lift up your voice.
look at these open air lines. That third word. Where did we call his name? From the what? The darkness, the darkness of sin and death. And these six new believers raised to walk in newness of life. Let's see. From the darkness I called your name. And in the darkness your mercy came. You called me out, lifted me up. How great is your God like you, 
that we can say amen, 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 and another one for good measure, amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. It is such an awesome blessing to be able to watch baptisms after baptisms, after baptisms, and be able to celebrate the goodness and mercy of God and the joy of new believers stepping into a life of obedience to Jesus. That is the ambition of every square inch of what we do on this campus and hopefully off. There are so many things that you could celebrate throughout your year. There are so many goals that you could have throughout your year. There are so many things that we could get lost in either the ambition or the drive or the celebration of but believers, new believers. That is where the party is, right? Absolutely. So as we start thinking again about training in godliness, then if nobody else has told you yet today, let's start off by being the first to say that we're actually glad you're here. If no one else in your life is glad that you're here, we're glad that you're here. Because this is real life. This is truth, this is salvation, this is real joy in all of life's ambition, in all of life's struggle, in all of the good or bad, this is life. This is truth. Because Jesus is the way to the Father. 
What a cool thing to be able to celebrate your loved, your intentionally designed, and it's a blessing to be able to share both singing praises to God and the Word of God. We've been blessed already. Later on, I'll have our Vietnamese brothers and sisters in Christ come back up so we can pray together. And listen, I don't know if that's culture. I don't know if that's counterculture for Vietnamese people to huddle together. We're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. Uh, We'll get to that in just a second. Kids, you guys are dismissed for Children's Church. Amber and Michelle are in the back, ready to celebrate who Jesus is with all of you. While they go and play and learn and read and pray together, let's take some time to do the same here. We're going to pray, we're going to play, we're going to celebrate God's goodness in all of our lives and train in actual godliness. Hey, if you guys, I know you just sat down, but if you guys want to come back up, um, where's, where, where'd my translator go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? There you are. Super. Uh, so I don't know if it's countercultural for Vietnamese people to huddle together when they pray and to touch, but I'm going to invite the whole church to do it. So anybody who wants to come on up, you come on up over here. All of my new baptisms, you come on up over here. Uh, and we are just going to group together, and we're going to pray for you guys. Oh, you got to get closer. Come on. Come on. You'll be okay. I may be taboo here. I don't even know. Good, good, good. Anybody who wants to, church? Climb on in here and squeeze on in. Don't be shy. Yeah, come on in. You can come right up in here. Come on. We'll get all in together. There we go. These are the cleanest people in the sanctuary right now. Squeeze on in. Squeeze on in. (laughs) Hey, it is a blessing first before we pray to be able to do this together. So if, if that doesn't translate into what I'm saying or what I'm praying to God, make sure you translate that for me, okay? Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for real life in your son, Jesus. Thank you that we can get together as a family with seemingly little in common except for the fact that we are intentionally, on purpose, designed by you to give you glory, to celebrate your goodness and your grace and your mercy, to make Jesus known to the ends of the earth. We pray for these that we have just witnessed their public profession of faith and their step of baptism, Father, that they would go and live out your command, not just with their actions, but also with their words, that everyone around them would know that they belong to you as ambassadors for Christ, as though you were pleading to the rest of the world through them. Help them do this with their families first and then to the ends of the earth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. As they're returning to their seats, go ahead and flip open to 1 Timothy with me. Timothy is training in godliness. Paul is doing his best as a human to train him in godliness. His parents and grandparents did their best to train Timothy in godliness. As we strive for godliness... Hear me when I say this part, because this might sound foreign or odd to your ears. We're not training in Christianity. We're training in holiness. These two things are different. Being called a Christian, taking on the name of Christ to yourself, means that you are saying publicly, Jesus has made me his righteousness. Therefore, I do not care what it means to be a good Christian. I care what it means to be holy. Because each individual person is going to have their idea of what it means to be Christian. And I don't care what another man thinks about being Christian. 
I care what scripture says about belonging to Jesus and living a holy life. If those two things are paramount, I will by default be a good Christian. Does that make sense? It's not that Christianity isn't important. It's not that you're not supposed to strive towards that goal. But let's make sure the goal is correct. Training in godliness requires us to dig a little bit deeper than surface-level understanding of Scripture and surface-level faith. There must be an understanding about who God is and about the required holy living from his people to show who he actually is to the ends of the earth or will never get it. Unfortunately, false humility and false worship has become common Christianity. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions because that might not settle well with you. That might not be who you are, and I'm not saying it is, but let me ask the two questions, and then we'll get into Scripture behind it because false humility has no place in Christianity. Neither does false worship. So the two questions become very important, and these are meant for you to dig out all week long from your own heart and your own head. The first question is this. Who is the most godly person you know? The second question is who's the person you know that you know you sin less than? Did you hear false humility and false worship in those two questions? I'm going to ask them again. Who's the godliest person you know if you think about it long enough you'll probably put a person in your mind the second is much easier to put a person in your mind that doesn't take much work for the average human at all who's the person you know sins more than you these two questions unfortunately govern modern Christianity If you have a mental picture of those people in your head, then we're ready to train for godliness and to stop training for common Christianity. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to read a section of Scripture. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. It is alive. It is truth. It is you. And because of it, we can know who you are, and we can know who we are. We can understand the actual goal that we're training towards and striving towards Christ's likeness. His image in full, having been given all the power, all the righteousness, standing in your grace, mercy, and glory. Help us to do that. Help us to live out a life that reflects you well. Thank you for teaching us who we are so that we don't walk away thinking that we're something we're not. Help us to be humble to stand in the power and the glory of Christ, but to do so ready to wash feet, to be persecuted, to be the least of these, and to do it with joy so that way we don't miss who you are and we don't deliver a false message. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be in 1 Timothy, and I want to read to you from verse 12 down to verse 17. That'll be our section of scripture today. It says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful putting me into service even though I was previously a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. It's a trustworthy statement, deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost. Yet for this reason I found mercy, so that in me, as the foremost sinner, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, 
invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Goodness, that is a spicy section of scripture. Pride will never allow you to follow God. It breeds embarrassment instead of freedom. So I have to ask a follow-up question to the first two that I gave. A picture of somebody who you believe is more godly and a picture of somebody who you believe is a worse sinner. If I asked you to give your testimony in full in front of the church and not like hey this is my testimony from the past but this is my testimony now what I'm struggling with now as a Christian what I choose over holiness that I need God to take away actual repentance if I asked for that now would it embarrass you if the answer is yes that's not freedom in Christ that's not something Christ is offering you. Christ doesn't offer you forgiveness, or he doesn't offer you embarrassment, he offers you freedom. He offers you forgiveness, he offers you grace and mercy. The ability to say out loud, I am the worst sinner I know. You know why? Because you actually know you. It's easy for us to take a look at somebody else's life and think they're the worst sinner I know because I can see the things that they're doing but you have no idea what's going on inside somebody else's head sitting next to you or behind you or in front of you or in the back of the room or in the front of the room. The problem with sinners is we're always the worst and nobody wants to be called to that. Pride breeds embarrassment. And so our testimony refuses to be a glory given to God. Instead, we use pride as a shield to hide our true testimony and steal glory from God by pretending that there are people holier than others and worse than others. Unfortunately, Scripture does not allow that false truth to be a part of your Christian doctrine. To train in godliness, you must first start from a point like Paul where you're willing to absolutely lay it all on the line and say, I am the worst sinner I know. I know my thoughts, I know my heart, I know my intent. I know every action and the motive behind it. I just have to guess at everyone else's. Well, stop guessing and start praying and praising for the things that God has released you from and ask him for more. And then we can start training for godliness. Take a look at the verses again. In verse 12 of 1 Timothy chapter 1, he says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's stop there for just a second. Would you be willing to say in full honesty that Christ Jesus is your Lord or is your Lord something else? When Paul writes letters to the church, he says their Lord is all sorts of things. It's all manner of greed, finances, lust, their stomach, anything else but Jesus. And as a result, it's like they are playing with the grace that God has given them. And Paul says, what should we do then? Should we sin so that grace would abound? Certainly not. Instead, we should repent and step away from it. Christ Jesus must be Lord. When he is, that's what strengthens you. When Jesus is Lord, that's where you get your strength. If not, your strength comes from the other things in life that you've made Lord. Have you put a person in the place of Jesus? What happens when they disappoint you? You have no more strength. Have you put your checkbook in the place of Jesus? When your job doesn't give you or when your bills are too high, where does your strength go? It's gone. Have you put your personal ability, your person, your health, the way you think life should be going, your intellect, and when they fail, where has your strength gone? It has disappeared. Your strength must be in Christ Jesus alone. And then nobody else can steal your joy from you because you're not worshiping them, you're not worshiping a thing, you're not worshiping health, you're not worshiping a country or a church. 
you're worshiping Jesus alone. Jesus gave strength to Paul because he considered him faithful, putting him into service. Here's the very best blessing that you could get, even though this morning has been full of blessings. The blessing that Jesus gives is who you are becoming and who you will become is not who you were. You don't have to be who you were. All you have to do is humbly submit to Jesus, and he changes you over and over and over again. Not that you are 100% done with the struggle when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. You are just finally training for the right event. You are finally running the race in the right direction. You're finally aiming towards the goal, the prize, the upward call. You're finally receiving strength and grace and mercy. You're receiving wisdom from the Holy Spirit. You're finally sealed so nobody can steal your progress from you anymore. You're actually headed in life to greater life and hopefully bringing other people along with you. The Christian term for that is progressive sanctification, meaning each day you walk with Christ, you should be getting closer. You should be growing stronger. You should be looking holier, more like Jesus. So listen, if you put a picture in your head of maybe a family member that you love to death because they looked holier to you because they've been walking with Jesus longer, I'm not trying to taint, tarnish, or steal that from you. I'm simply suggesting don't make them your goal, make Jesus your goal. It's the way they got there in the first place. Even though I was previously a blasphemer, even though I was a persecutor, even though I was a violent aggressor, that's another cool piece about Jesus. He knows you. He knows who you can become standing in his strength, standing in his wisdom, standing in his forgiveness. Jesus knows your potential. Everyone else around you doesn't have a clue what you're capable of becoming because they didn't design you. They're not giving you the power to step into that. They're not giving you grace and wisdom and mercy. They're not giving you anything to step into that that Jesus didn't have to give them first. Jesus knew who Paul could become. And so even though he's holding a letter from the church that allows him to kill brand new Christians or to imprison or to torture them, to try to absolutely destroy the name of Christ while he's on his way to do his worst, Jesus still knows him. He says, I've formed you and fashioned you in your mother's womb. There's no place you can go where you can hide from me. I know you. And because I know you, I know my plans and my purpose for you. It is for your good for a future. And what you're doing now is not for your good, and it is not for your future. It's like, so he changes them. Even though this is who Paul is, he says, yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. Listen, if you can't say I acted ignorantly, I was a fool, I did something wrong, it was me. If you can't say those things in your life, then pride is stealing your freedom in Christ, and it's damaging every relationship around you. It is not the intent that Jesus gives to you to spread to the rest of the world, because the message that you're spreading is, I've become my own God. I'm perfect. It's not me, it's you. You must be able to say, I acted. In verse 14, it says, And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant. You know how the grace of the Lord started out for Paul? It blew everyone to the ground, roasted him, and blinded him. And made him stumble around and says, Paul, why are you persecuting me? I mean, his name was different then. He called him Saul. 
the grace of the Lord comes to Paul in the form of damage. He took something from him. It hurt. It was scary. It was not pleasant. It created panic and unsurety. He had no idea what else to do but to throw himself down on the ground and say, well, I must be ready to die because I, this is it. He forced dependence on Paul. Paul wasn't dependent on anybody before that. Paul was the guy. He didn't need anybody to lead him around by the hand and show him where to go because he was blind or incapable. He was the epitome of capable. Everyone followed him. And yet he says in this section of Scripture, the grace of our Lord was more than abundant. I think Paul knew he should have died. If the wages of sin is death, then that man should have been killed, resurrected, killed, resurrected, killed, resurrected, killed, resurrected. Could you imagine if that was the pattern that God gave us for our deeds? The Bible is very clear about this. The earning, the income, the check for sin is death. Praise be to God that that check doesn't come instantly and that we don't get resurrected to experience it every time we sin. Praise be to God that I will live in eternity with him and never have to feel the weight of that sin. And if you belong to Jesus, neither will you. But if you do not, this is literally what Paul had earned. It's what he deserved. And he said, instead of killing me, because I am the worst of sinners, the foremost, the chief, the, the worst person I know. That's what I love about this section of Scripture. Paul makes it clear he's the worst person he knows. He grew up under Roman oppression. He grew up under, under slavery. He grew up under crucifixion. He grew up under torture. By this point, they're already feeding Christians to lions. Like, of all the things in his life that he knows from other humans, treating other humans poorly, he doesn't seem to have a problem with saying, but of all of them, I'm the worst. I love this. Because it's refreshing. And it's so foreign to my daily person that it's a good reminder The grace shown, the mercy shown, was more than abundant with faith and love that are found in Christ Jesus. You say, listen, I didn't just get mercy. I wasn't just excused for my sin. I wasn't just forgiven for being the foremost sinner that I know. Instead, I was also given faith Listen, if nobody else has told you this before, the reason you believe in Jesus is because he's giving you faith. It is not of yourself. You don't make the choice someday to follow Jesus because at some point your intellect reaches some heightened sense that you just think, wow, this is like, this is what I should do. You do it because Jesus is pouring out faith over all of his creation and we respond to the gift of faith that's given. And Paul says the abundance shown unto me is given in faith, but not just faith so that I would know who Jesus is, but that that man who I helped kill and have been killing those who love him, he actually loves me. Do you have any idea how hard it is to actually find people that love you? That's rare. That's hard to find. It's hard to hang on to because love is typically conditional in the human experience. I love you because you're nice to me. And when you're not nice to me, I don't love you anymore. That's not love. Scripture says God is love. And Paul is saying, you you gave that to me. 
of all the people I know, you gave that to me? Of the way I know myself, you gave that to me? It says, is a trustworthy statement, deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This is a trustworthy statement. It's why God came to earth, to save sinners. But coupled with that, Paul says, here's another trustworthy statement. This is a package deal. It's like a progressive bundle, right? You don't get one, you get them both covered. Not only did Jesus Christ come to the earth to save sinners, but I'm the worst. This is worthy of all acceptance. Yet for this reason I found mercy, so that in me, as the foremost sinner, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. If you're wondering why God saved you, it's so that in you, God's perfect patience may be demonstrated to all those who are still lost so that they may know they too can be forgiven and have eternal life. But if you're walking around this church, this campus, this city, the world, thinking that you are better than someone else in their sin, you will never demonstrate the grace of Christ. And all the message you're supposed to be delivering out is now lost. And you're praising yourself as God. And so will everyone else around you. It is glory stolen. And you may just need some more of that mercy that God gave to Paul. And it may hurt a little bit. But the outcome you may understand. You may submit. You may surrender. You may believe in the faith that he's given that you are foremost found mercy to demonstrate his perfect patience to the end of the world so that somebody else might get eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, and I love this piece, the only God. And there are no other gods. As much as we build ourselves up to be our own God, good luck. There are no other gods. It will only ever Always eternal be him. Whether you can see him or not, whether you believe in him or not, he will get all the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That small piece on the end is a little phrase that says, let it be so. As though it would need our permission. But God says, everything that we pray together as a group It is Jesus' absolute joy to honor and to grant. So that's the prayer this morning. That forever and ever, all of the praise and the honor and the glory would go to him alone. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you that you strengthen us for your service, for walking in holiness and your patience with us when we don't. Help us to submit to who you are, to take joy in your righteousness by being able to say, I am the foremost sinner I know and you still actually love me. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that we get to celebrate commitments to you this morning in baptism as a group of believers from all over the world. Father, yours is the glory and the honor forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. In a light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days. Almighty, victorious. It's his great name we praise. Let's stand.
Oh. 